Hello everybody and welcome back to Alex Elliot Golf and welcome to the channel again Carl. Pleasure to be here Alex. So today's video is all about three do's mm -hmm. and three don'ts out on the golf course. Okay. So from my experience a lot of people do these things, the three things I'm about to speak about far too often on the golf course. And these okay. are some things that I hear lessons come back to me and said oh I did this, I did that and I think are actually detrimental to so scoring. The game. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. So the three don'ts that I think are number one Spending too much time over the golf ball. Yeah. Whether that be swing thoughts, Definitely. taking into account where the trouble is, start thinking about a bad shot previously. Mm -hmm. I really think that the less time you can spend over the golf ball, it's probably going to be better. I, I think as a generalisation, what you get an awful lot of club members doing, or club golfers doing, is, that, is they don't spend enough time before the shot and spend far too much time over the, the shot. shot. In professional golf, you'll probably see the opposite of that. There's a little bit of time creating clear intent about what you're trying to do. And then, you know, for me, I completely agree with you. The more you can get in there and let the thing go, the better. The more time you're over the ball, the more thinking time, the more time for tension to build up. It's, a, it's not a good thing. No. It's a definite don't. Definitely. The second don't is something that I, again, hear all the time. I'll kind of paint the picture here. A lot of the time people say, oh, I hit a bad shot on the ninth. And then I just went off the rails. Mm. That then made me hit a bad shot on 10, 11, 12, and so on. And ultimately was their card wrecker. Yeah. I, I think if people could lose that baggage, I almost press the reset button, mm -hmm. it would be a better place for them to be. Yeah, I think I, I call it contamination. <laughs> How you allow this shot to contaminate something that's going to happen in the future. And uh, we've worked a lot with players, certainly on tour over the years, what we call uh, the post shot. You know, what are you? What are your reactions like? We we talk a lot about taking charge of your reactions mm. because you know if getting if getting annoyed being miserable and grumpy on a golf course was the route to success there'd be far more scratch players <laughs> out there um, you know if it's a route that you've tried for 25 years probably the 26th year isn't gonna isn't gonna, gonna make it <laughs> so it's something that you could actually do today when you Definitely. play golf today you could actually make a point that you are going to have better reactions to the shot so that you actually hit you know we often say you know treat yourself as though you were caddying for somebody else because the way that you speak to yourself if you were caddying for somebody else you'd have a very short-lived career with them definitely i think another one i mean i've heard this and uh, you mentioned it as well is keeping your eye level above yeah, flag yeah. level yeah you can almost make you Take feel charge happier. of your body language yeah, yeah. exactly so yeah. simple things like that can stop you taking baggage from that one downward game spiral to the next yeah. yeah the final one is something that we spoke about as well and it's i think a lot of people start off the first few holes and say for example the most typical thing people do is slice it so they start slicing the first few and they're determined they're going to hit that draw so yeah. they're determined by the sixth hole we're going to change change and hit that draw and ultimately we know that even if you take golf lessons and trying to change your swing reality is we're not, probably not going to change it that much yeah. so i think and this will probably lead on to some of the do's that you want to do is that playing with what you've got and mm. don't try and change that on the golf course yeah i think it's such an important point that that you know, if you've got if you've got a fade going on today, be careful that you don't make what I call draw decisions, where you get on a hole and the hole screaming at you that you should hit it from right to left, and you just don't have that shot in your bag. You know, you can play a very very effective round of golf if you know what you have today and you go with that and you don't fight it. Now, even the best players in the world, on a given day, they might be drawing the ball, and then tomorrow that's that shapes it suddenly turns into a bit of a fade. That's the best in the world do that. So if the best in the world do that, everybody down from that at club level needs to know that it really is very much about what have I got today yep. and using that today, using that efficiently today. And making your on-course strategy decisions around that. Around, around, exactly, yeah. So I've highlighted the three things you don't want to do. What are the three things from your experience working with elite players and the stuff that you do on the Mind Factor courses, what do you do want to do on the golf course? I think it's don't do the do's or do the do the don't do's. Do the. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think um, one, of the, one of the most important things that I, I think I could suggest players is make sure that actually when you're over the ball that you what I call park your attention that of all of the things that you could be thinking about over the ball you really limit it to one thing now that might be for some players that might be very much the target for other players it might be the ball flight we, we swing thoughts get a really bad rap 
Um, and, but yeah, I find a lot of good players do have swing thoughts as such or swing feelings. So it could be, for instance, about a certain part of your body that you're focused on or what the golf club is doing. But the key is that you actually limit it to one thing. Mm -hmm. you, don't, you don't sort of start off trying to think about the target and then as soon as the backswing uh, starts away, you're thinking about the golf club or your turn or whatever. That's what tends to happen to most people. The, the attention is jumping around. So it would be park it in one place. So the second one? The, the, the second one, um, it sounds such an obvious one, uh, but I remember Nick Faldo saying years ago that one of the most powerful forces that he ever felt on a golf course was the force of clear intention. Now, times when we get so wrapped up in the golf swing, we actually don't ask ourselves what we're trying to do with the golf ball. So to ask yourself the question in your pre-shot, what is the shot here? Just by simply asking the question, what is the shot here? You're actually gonna get an image of what you're intending to mm. do. Now that doesn't mean you're gonna bring that shot off every time, but actually having clear intention about what you're trying to do in this unique moment in time, as I say, it doesn't guarantee good shots, but my word, it doesn't half increase it. it. And the final one, we sort of alluded to this earlier. Yeah, I think that the, 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 the final one, it kind of encapsulates an awful lot of things here is that 90% of, of the time that you're on the golf course, you're not actually playing golf. The time in between shots when you're walking is a huge part of the game. And if we think that that doesn't have any impact on the rest of it, we're, we're sadly mistaken. Now, most of the time that we're walking in between shots, we're either thinking about something that's history, that we three-putted a green two greens ago yeah. or, we, or we're projecting we're forecasting into the future what might score i might do am i going to hang on to this score the brain the mind is constantly going backwards and forwards past and future and such a simple idea is that if you place your attention on your physical body it actually grounds you much more in the present so it might seem a bit left field but the idea is you're walking in between shots just to simply pay attention to the feeling of your feet on the floor it, t it tends to just quieten things down stops your mind jumping around and the quieter that you can be in between shots from a mental game perspective the more easily then you are able to create the next shot mm. because you, again you've not been contaminated by lots of what ifs and should be's Perfect, thank you very much. My pleasure. So you've got the three do's and we won't even mention what we don't want to do. <laughs> we just want to concentrate on the three do's. You can take straight to the golf course and all these things that we're saying here won't require any swing changes. The actual things you can do right away. Thank you very much for watching guys. Thank you for Carve Corner on the channel. My pleasure. And if you're interested in more performance-based activities, visit Carl at themindfactor.com the link will be down below the certified courses and a bunch of other content that will really help you improve your game